Shalom, everybody. Uh, back, welcome back to you know followers of Yahweh. Um, tonight's uh, message will be on what is the real story behind Cain and Abel and Seth. Um, this actually comes out of Genesis here in chapter uh, four and part of five. Um, so as we go through this, I like you to think about what you've read in the Bible. In that story between Cain, Abel, and Seth, who were they? Where did they come from? Who were their wives? Uh, what do we really know about them? Because as we go through these slides here, you're going to hear some stuff and you're going to be surprised because there is a uh, apocryphy out there you know, that gives you a little bit more information behind you know, the background behind these three people and their family and stuff like that. So as we go through here, um, I like to start us out with prayer, as we always do. And tonight's prayer, we will pray. Our Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight for this Shabbat. Give us in your grace and your mercy to allow us to be here. The breath of life that you give us, Father, to, to be able to discern this word father we ask for your grace and mercy and if there's anybody out there tonight father that or during whenever they listen to this again father that if they have any things that they need father that they've already asked that to you father we ask for this that you have already blessed them whatever it is father that you want them to have father we ask for your grace and mercy as we go through this in yeshua's name we pray amen well um 
let's go ahead and start off with our uh, first slide as we go through here. And uh, of course, as we look here, it, the titles tonight is called What is the Real Story Behind Cain, Abel, and Seth? Um, from what you've really learned from the Bible, it's probably something different. And we're going to see here, here real shortly. Okay. So if we look at here, uh, it talks about the two bloodlines. And if we read here in Genesis 4, 1 through 26, um, we will see that a man was intimate with his wife, Eve, which we know is Adam. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Then she said, I have created a man just as the Lord did. That, I mean, if you already listened to that, that already sounds kind of weird. So she's already saying she's she is just like, you know, God. I've created a man just as he did. I did it. I have the same power. If you have just read that right there, it says, I have created a man just as the Lord did. Now if we go into two, it says, then she gave birth to his brother, Abel. So here in this version, it says from what we're reading, first it says Cain was born. And then later on, it doesn't give us a time period, but it makes it sound like there's a time period there that Abel was born. And of course, Abel took care of flocks while Cain cultivated the ground. And at the designated time, Cain brought some of the fruit of the ground for an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought some of his firstborn of his flock, even the fattest of them. And the Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering. But with Cain and his offering, he was not pleased. So Cain became very angry and was expression was downcast. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is the expression downcast? Is it not true that if you do what is right, you'll be fine? But if you do not what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to dominate you, but you must subdue it. Just like all of us, Chris, you know, sin's always going to be crouching at your door. So you should always, you know, subdue that sin before it gets out to you. So if you have anything that's in you or, you know, something that's coming at you, you need to take care of it because if not, you're going to be just like Cain. And then here we look in here in uh, 4, 8, it says, Cain said to his brother Abel, Hey, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And he replied, I do not know. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother blood is crying out to me from the ground. So now you are banished from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And then here we go in 12. It says, when you try to cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its best for you. You will be homeless, a wanderer of the earth. Then Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to endure. Look, you are driving me off the land today and I must hide from presence. I will be homeless a wanderer of the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, All right then, if anyone kills Cain, Cain will be avenged seven times as much. Then the Lord put a, a special mark on Cain. So this is another one that you gotta you gotta really pay attention to is that special mark. What was the special mark? And we will learn later on what that was and when did it come as we will see, so that one who found him would know and would strike him down. So Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and lived on the land of Nod in the east of Edom. Here we have in the beginning of the civilization, Cain was intimate with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Okay, this Enoch here is not the Enoch that we know of. Okay, so you got to remember this, <laughs> which most people think this is when they hear Enoch, this is not the right Enoch that wrote the book of Enoch. Cain was building a city and he named the city after his son Enoch. Okay, so we have a we have an Enoch that's on the Cain's bloodline. All right, so this is something you will learn here in a little while. And then it says, to Enoch was born Irad, 
Ired was the father of Mahel, Majel was the father of Methusel, and Methusel was the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives. That's interesting right there. Took two wives. The name of the first was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. Adam gave birth to Jabal. He was the first of those who lived in the tents and kept livestock. The name of his brother was Jobal. He was the first of all who played the harp and the flute. So this is already we have the first time the instruments are being used. Now Zillah also gave birth to, to Tubal Cain, who he hated metal and shape, all kinds of tools made of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nama, and Lamak said to his wives, Zada, Zahil, listen to me. You wives of Lamak, hear my words. I have killed a man of for wandering me, a young man hunting me, or hurting me, I'm sorry. If Cain is to be avenged seven times as much, then Lamak seventy seven times. And Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son named Seth. So now we have Cain, Abel, and Seth. This is the order that they were born from what we read in the normal Bible. God has given me another child in place of Abel because Cain killed him. And in 26, and a son was all born to Seth who named Enosh. Okay, this is also pronounced as Enoch. And this is the Enoch that we know as the book of Enoch. At that time, people began to worship the Lord. Here's a, an, a nice diagram uh, of if you wanted to take a look at the bloodline. If we look at this, we can see Adam and Eve and then their wives. Because the Bible really doesn't mention the wives for each one and who their sons were. And this is kind of interesting because... Some of these names, when you start looking at them, they are almost exactly the exact same thing. It's like we have, what well, from what we've been told, Cain is supposed to be, you know, the bad line or the bad seed, and then we know the Seth is supposed to be the good seed. But if you look at a lot of the names, they're almost exactly the same. It's like somebody was mimicking somebody here, you know. So if we look, like it says Cain. Uh, married Awan, and then uh, Abel married Azara, and Seth had Azara and also Akila. So when Abel died, he married, you know, Abel's wife, is, is what it says here. Okay, and then of course Akila married, you know, Seth, and they had born Enosh and Noam. Now, we're going to take the next slide because I found another one, which was, this is another very interesting one that show, you'll see here. It broke the, the lines down for each family. And as we look, okay, look at the right side. We have Seth and Klima, okay. Now, this is the line that most people know as from the Bible when people we are now were born from Seth's bloodline, okay? Now, take a look at Cain's bloodline. And if you look, we have a name of called Lua. Who is Lua? She was actually the queen of Kish, okay? And we have the Cain of Kish, uh, and they were both actually Eniki blood, which most people don't know that, okay? And if you look, we see Awan. Now we see Awan who married Intan. And then we have a breakdown. We see the other Enoch too. Okay. There is actually talks about the bloodline of being mixed earlier than what we thought. From, you know, like the angels were already, you know, coming down. Um, there's in, in the Bible, they talk about uh, Lilith which we saw Lilith here. This is the Lilith uh, who was supposed to be Adam's first wife. And the Bible really doesn't mention that. Why? Because, you know, they were trying to hide a lot of stuff. I mean, if you read back and you find out, you know, uh, who their brothers and sisters, they were actually marrying their brothers and sisters. Well, we're going to learn something here shortly, but um, I'm just trying to point this out now. 
these are the siblings right here and this is in actually if you go to Wikipedia you know it's not a scholar source but it breaks out and it talks about the children it mentions five children well the first one actually mentions a woman or daughter which was the oldest daughter her name was Awa okay and the Bible doesn't even say that it says that okay you know Abel or Cain was born and then Cain you know and then Abel was born and then from there Cain end up knowing his wife well how did he know his wife who was his wife I mean you don't just walk around the streets and say oh I know her she's my wife you know somehow a wife was introduced to her and we're gonna see here in a little while, a little while how that happened but I was I wanted to show you that there are other children that were out there and we're gonna even see even more than what we see here because as you can see um, we have Awa, which she also had different names depending on which version of the Bible you went or if you went even further on to other scholar sources you will see she went by the name of Avan or Evan uh, and she was a daughter and then we have Cain we also uh, we have another way of it's Quain or Cabel uh, that was the son this is we know as Cain and then we have Azra or Azra she was the next daughter and then of we have Abel, uh, or Havel is also pronounced. And then next is Seth, and it, or Set or Sit, you know, it's also going to be pronounced as that too. And then we have Aklimia, or Lua, or Kalama, or Kalama, or Bavra, Aklia. She was, the, she was the last daughter that was listed. Okay. Now, if you remember from the slides before, who married who? <laughs> okay because this is this is going to get very interesting as we look through here you're going to be like wait a second i thought this person married this person but when we look did they really marry that person or who did they marry or why did they marry that person you know it's it's like nowadays what we would call a jerry springer show we're going to see who married who or who was having an affair or who was lusting after the other person now I broke it in order and these are the siblings again um, so you can see the oldest daughter was actually a Klimia. she was the actually the oldest daughter and she came out as a twin to Cain uh, back then um, what happened was when you know the, the Hebrew children were born they were always having uh, twin kids it could have been two boys or two girls or a boy and a girl and at this time this is what was happening was they were having twins we will see okay the first married child we have a Klimia. she was married to um, you know we'll find out here in a second she was actually married to Abel okay and it says a Klimia's name also known as Lua she's described as the most beautiful of all the earlier daughters of Adam and Eve so she was the most beautiful. However, Cain reportedly hated her while it's in Eve's womb. Okay, with ever with her, the name of Lua means beautiful. This is a narrative was recorded in the forgotten books of Eden, which itself is an ex extinguishes of the earlier apocryphal text. So, as you can see, Aklima was the first married to Abel, and then she got married to Cain. Wait a second that's that's so weird I thought she just married from Abel to Seth or did she get married from Cain to a or from Abel to Cain okay we're gonna see here it's get, like I said it's getting very interesting this is not what you really thought happened okay because a marriage between Ecclion and Abel was proposed and arranged by their father Adam in order to commence a, a commitment from Ecclion's twin brother Adam their father suggested that a sacrifice be made yet sacrifice was subsequently rejected by God the reason behind the commotion was that Cain viewed Aklima as being a Thessalical more attractive than Awan so what happened what do we really know that happened why did Cain kill Abel 
Was it because, you know, God did not accept his sacrifice? Or was it more, she was more attractive than, I want my brother's wife? Hmm, that's a good question right there. Think about that. Nowadays, a lot of, a lot of people kill their family members for the other family member's wife or brother or, you know, husband for their husband or their wife, you know. Just, like I said, this is like a Jerry Springer show right here, I'm telling you. It was very interesting when I was coming across this stuff. And as we come across, here's Cain. We see Cain. He was married. Who was he married to? Of course, it was Awan and Eklimia, or her name was also Lua. Now, this Enoch that they they bore was not the Enoch, like I mentioned earlier, which was the one who created the book of Enoch. That person came from the son of Jarad, and he was the authorship of the book of Enoch. As a scribe according to the Jubilees the book of Jubilees 4-9 Enoch's mother aunt was named Awan Ooh, look at that see <laughs> so what was the real reason why Cain, Cain, Cain killed Abel was it because of a poor sacrifice or was it because he was actually lusting over his, his brother's bride that's a good question the Bible doesn't tell you that but Let's read on. We have Abel, as we can see, and who he was married to. He was married to Aklia or Azara. Abel worked with livestock. He didn't have any children from what we found out. Who was Awan? Awan was also one of the daughters who married Cain. Okay. Awan, also pronounced as Avan, meant vice, iniquity, potency, was the first was the wife and sister of Cain? Wait a second, he married his sister. Why do we why don't we say that in the Bible? That's the reason why the wives were taken out of the Bible. Was because it would look like incest. They wanted to make sure they did not have incest in the Bible. So they had to change the Bible. But it says right here, if we look, it says that and the sister of Cain and Abel was his daughter and who was the of Adam and Eve. In the book of Jubilees, she is called Awan. However, in other Aramaic texts, such as the Jewish and Muslim, she is called Jamil. Similar, her sister as Azara, or Azara means restraint, was the wife of Cain's two brothers, Abel. And after Abel's murder, Seth is in the one in Hebrew, whose chronically worked is called Babarak. So as you can see, you know, things are getting really strange here, you know. Here's Seth. Now we have Seth. Seth, who supposedly had married Azara, and her his other wife was Aklimia. But so wait a second. How did he marry two? So now we have Cain married two, and we have Seth married two. And they're both of the brothers and sisters. I tell you, this is getting really strange, as we will see. In, Ju in Judaism, in Christianity, and Manthesium, Sethism, in Islam, was the third son of Adam and Eve. He was the brother of Cain and Abel, who were the only other of the children mentioned by the name in the Hebrew Bible. According to Genesis 4-25, Seth was born after Abel's murder, and Eve believed God had appointed him as a placement of Abel. According to Genesis, Seth was born when Adam was 130 years old, a son in his likeness and an image. The genealogical is repeated at 1 Chronicles 1, 1 through 3, and Genesis 5, 4 through 5, states that Adam fathered sons and daughters. Okay, so he had more than one son, he had one more than one daughter, before his death at age 930 years old. According to the Bible, Seth lived to the age of 912. In the Greek versions, Seth and Eve traveled to the doors of the garden to beg for some oil on the tree of mercy, which was actually the tree of life. On the way, Seth is attacked by and bitten by a wild beast, which goes away. And when ordered by Seth, Michael, so this is Michael, uh, the archangel, refuses to give them the oil at that time but promises to give it at the end of the time. 
when all the flesh will be raised up and the delights of paradise will be given to the holy people and God will be in the, their midst. On their return, Adam says to Eve, What hast thou done? Thou hast brought up us great wrath, which is death. In chapters 5 through 14, later on, only Seth can witness the taking up of Adam in his funeral in a divine chariot, which deposits him in a garden of Eden. Book of Jubilees, regarded as a non chronicle except as the Alexandria Church, also dates his birth to 130 a.m., according to it. In the 2.31 a.m., Seth married his sister, Azara, who was four years younger than he was in the year 235 a.m. Azara gave birth to Enos, which we also know as Enoch. And the last child here we see is Azara. As Azara Azara married Abel and Seth. Azara was the daughter of Adam and Eve and the wife and sister of Seth, as we see in the book of Jubilees in chapter 4. Their children were Enosh, Noam, Niba, Ida, Thila, Fona, Mata, Melida. And here we go. We got the book of Jubilees 4, because once we were talking about it, we have 1 through 22. In the third week, the second Jubilee, she gave birth to Cain. In the fourth, she gave the birth to Abel. In the fifth, she gave birth to her daughter, Awa. In the first year of the third Jubilee, Cain slew Abel because God accepted the sacrifice of Abel and did not accept the offering of Cain. And he slew him in the field, and his blood cried from the ground to heaven, complaining because he had slain him. And the Lord proved Cain because Abel because he had slain him and made him a fugitive on the earth because of the blood of his brother. And he cursed him upon the earth. And of this account it is written in the heavenly tables, Cursed is he who smites his neighbor treacherously, and let all who have seen and heard say, So be it. And the man who has seen and not declared it, let him accure as the other. And for the reason that we announce, we will we come before the Lord, our God, all sin is which is committed in heaven and on earth, and the light and the darkness, and everywhere. And Adam and his wife mourned for Abel for four weeks and of years. And in the fourth year of the fifth week, they became joyful, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bore him a son, and he called his name Seth. For he said, God has raised us a second seed unto us the earth instead of Abel. For Cain slew him in the sixth week. He begot his daughter, Azara. And Cain took Awan, his sister, to be his wife. She bore him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. In the fifth year, the first week of the fifth jubilee, houses were built on the earth, and Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son, Enoch. Adam knew his wife, and she bore him nine sons. Wait a second. There's only three sons here mentioned earlier. Now he has nine sons. In the fifth week, in the fifth jubilee, Seth took Azariah and his sister to be his wife. And in the fourth, in the sixth year, or the sixth week, she bare him Enos, and began to call the name of the Lord on the earth. In the seventh jubilee of the third week, Enos took Noam, his sister, to be his wife, and she bore him a son. And in the third year, the fifth week, and he called his name Kenan. And at the close of the eighth jubilee, Kenan took Malath, his sister, to be his wife. Wait a second, everybody's taking their sisters and to be their wives. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of incest going on, guys. <laughs> but they didn't want the incest happening earlier. Wonder why. And if we look here, and it says, In the second week of the tenth jubilee, Makala took his wife, Dinah, the daughter of Baraka and the daughter of his father brother, and she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Jared. So this is the son, this is the father who we got from Enoch. For his days and angels of the Lord descended on the earth, those who are named on the watchers that they should instruct the children of men, and that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. And in the eleventh jubilee, Jared took his wife, and her name was Barak, the daughter of Rashidel, the daughter of his father, brother, in the fourth week of this jubilee. 
And as she bore him a son in the fifth week for the fourth year of the Jubilee, he was called Enoch. So this is the Enoch from the book of Enoch's. And he was the first among men that are born on the earth who learned writing and knowledge and wisdom who wrote down the signs in heaven according to the order in the months of the book that men might know the seasons and years according to the order of the separate months. So now we know where we how we knew the months and seasons right there because of our brother Enoch. He was the one who had the writing and knowledge and the wisdom and he knew how, you know, from the signs from above, from the heaven to write them down. And in the first to write the testimony, he testified to the sons of men, sons of men among this generation on the earth recounted the weeks of the Jubilees and made known to them the days of the year and set order the months recounted the Sabbaths of the year as we made them known to the him. And what was and what was and what will be he saw in a vision of his deep in his sleep it as it happened to the children of man throughout their generations until the day of judgment he saw an understanding everything in wrote his testimony and placed them on the earth for all the children of men for every generation in the 12th jubilee in the sixth week thereof he took and took himself a wife and her name is edan the daughter of daniel the daughter of his father brother in the sixth year in the week she bore him a son and called him Methuselah and he was a moreover with the angels of God these six jubilees of the year they showed him everything which is on the earth and the heavens in the rule of the sun and he wrote them down everything and he testified to the watchers who had sinned with the daughters of men so wait a second so we see here Right here, he already had a vision that the angels, they were coming down and they were already going to have sin with the daughters of men. For these had begun to unite themselves so as to be defiled with the daughters of men. And Enoch testified against them all. So, the Apocalypse of Moses. What was the Apocalypse of Moses? The Apocalypse of Moses as that for our eyes we were open in the fourth wheel I knew that I was a bear all the righteous with which I had been clothed upon I wept and said to him with hast thou done to this me and thou hast this deprived me of the glory of which I was clothed but I wept also about which I clothed was was sore but he descended from the tree and vanished and I began to seek in my meekness, my nakedness in my part for the leaves to hide my shame but I found none for as soon as I hid into the leaves I accept the fig but only the leaves so we see here okay that in the pocket of Moses we see a part of the the Bible you know of Adam and Eve how they came they were they, you know they came into the fruit of their knowledge and f this is part from last week's uh, you know teaching but I wanted to kind of like bring it into this so that we, 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 we have Adam and Eve. They left the garden because they ate the fruit and now they had their children. And if we saw earlier with their children, they, you know, um, they, they were having many affairs, <laughs> uh, you know. So here's the life of Adam and Eve. This is an actual book. It's called The Life of Adam and Eve. Eve's Recognition of Her Sin. She realized that she sins. At the hour I learned with my eyes that I was naked of the glory I which I had been clothed, and there I began to weep and said, What did you do to me? But I was no longer mortified about the war which the enemy had made against me. Then I learned the, the sense forth that we lead to the depths of hell. When Satan did this, he descended from the tree and the hidden of the garden. In the parts of the garden, I saw leaves. See, she she found out that she was, you know, she was naked, so that's why she took the leaves, you know. And then it says, I took the leaves and covered my nakedness as, as I stood by the tree of which I had eaten. I was afraid, my son Seth, because of the oath, I swore that I would give my husband Adam to eat. So she's actually talking to Seth here too. She's telling Seth about what happened to why she sinned. 
Although the well-known Cain and Abel were the sons of Hawel, Eve, the actual had different fathers. Wait a second. That does not say this in my Bible. How do they have different fathers? This is very interesting. While Abel was a straightforward product, a homo sapiens to sapiens union, with Adam, his elder brother Cain was an advancement of the earlier cloning experiments. See? And with Hawel, Ovum, further enriched with Iniki, Anaki's blood, this means that Cain emerged as the first advanced protocol or product of the royal seed, and then Cain by Mary Iniki and Lilia's daughter was able to increase the share of Anaki's blood genetic heritage to the benefits of his descendants, whereby his original Genesis text made such claim, prestige, and serenity of his line, these attributes had been demolished by the translators and theologians in the favor of secondary descendant from the Hawel's third son, Seth. In Genesis 4-2, we read that Abel was a keeper of the sheep, while Cain was a, tithe, a tiller of the ground. But a better translation of a more accurate would be that Cain acquired dominion over the earth, as indeed he did with his kingship. When we read Genesis 4, 3 through 5, that Abel's offering was, a, was a, were acceptable to the Lord, but Cain's were not, we get a different impression of the offering was, this, was some way inferior, but the original emphasis was on the premise of the offering. The variations were acceptable from acceptable from Abel as a sub subnerent subject whereas for the Cain to take to make an offering was unacceptable because of his un, not, un unkillingly status Genesis 4 through 6 to 7 does actually make the point that Cain's seniority over Abel was significant and thou shalt rule over him and we see Cain married Lulu Lula, Lilith, Awa, the daughter of Lilith and granddaughter of Reshkin and Negra of the Netherlands and the netherworld of Harris to the Marka Makale. She was a purebred Anaki, stock and their sons were Anta and Enoch as a result of the Anaki blood was further heightened. So as you can see from above, right here, we have the Anaki blood being born, okay? So this is, this is another reason why they didn't want to have this in the Bible. Because think about that. Would you want to know that you're, you know, part Anaki too? The old Hebrew scripture is rather more interingling when, than the Western translation. It respects of E's first son, Cain. Both the Hebrew Genesis and Midrash claim that Cain was not the son of Adam, but the son of Eve and Salaman, the Lord of Sama. Sama was a king a kingdom to the east of Haran in the northern uh, Mestathopian of the Lord of Sama and was an Enoki. Cain would therefore have had more Enoki blood than his younger half brother Abel and Seth, the son of Adam. It's interesting that the descendant line from Cain was given for only six generations in Genesis and abandoned by the Israelite scribes in favor of the following and junior line from the Seth. In contrast, <coughs> Sumerian king list focuses wholly on Samel a line from Cain, according to the Hebrew university line. The line from Seth down to Noah, as given in the Bible, is probably a mythical and, and hey, Abraham was more likely born in the historical record line of Cain. Wait a second, that is so weird. We thought Abraham was coming from Seth. Hmm, this is so interesting. From Wikipedia, Cain and Abel were the first and second sons of Adam and Eve. <clears throat> but wait a second, we, we just read that they were, well, they were the first and second sons. All right. <clears throat> they were the first and second sons of Adam and Eve in the religious of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Their story is told in Genesis 4, 1 through 16, but in the Quran 5, 26-32, in all other versions, Cain is a farmer and commits the first murder by killing his brother Abel and a shepherd. 
after God rejects his Cain, Cain's sacrifice but accepts Abel, the Bible is filled with tales of sibling rivalry. So we already see a, a, a rivalry happen on. Supposedly, you know, God didn't like Cain's sacrifice, but he liked Abel's sacrifice. But then Cain, remember, Cain gave the first sacrifice. So did he know how to sacrifice? How did Abel know how to sacrifice? Okay. Now, remember, Cain was, he, he loved, he was lusting after Abel's wife. Remember that. So do you really think it was because of an offering or was it because of a civil, a, you know, sibling rivalry that was going on? The oldest known copy of the biblical narratives of the, is from the Dead Sea Scrolls in the mid first century. Cain and Abel appear in a number of the other texts and a story in this subject of various interpretations. Abel, the first murderer victim is sometimes seen as the first martyr. While Cain, the first murderer, is sometimes seen as a progenitor of evil. A few scholars suggest that Periscope may have been based on a Sumerian story representing the conflict between known mask shepherds and the settler farmers. The second part of this story, which is very interesting, the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I do not know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? Your brother cries out to me from the ground so now you are cursed with alienation from the ground that opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood you have shed if you work the land it will never again give you its yield you will be rentless wanderer of the earth but Cain answered the Lord my punishment is too great so as we see here it says invitable one must question as to exactly who might find Cain and kill him Clearly, by far, the simplest answer is that Adam's family were not the only beings on earth with a penchant of for killing members of their own species. Then the Lord replied to him, in this case, whoever kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over, and he will have be placed a mark on Cain. So remember, the father is going to place a mark on Cain so that whoever found him will know not to kill him. Then Cain went on on the world's presence from the Lord's presence and into the land of Nod and the eastern of Eden. In Judaism, the mark is not a punishment but a sign of God's mercy. And Enoch's mercy is quite possible. When Cain was sentenced to be a wanderer, he did not dispute the punishment but only begged that the terms of his sentence be altered slightly protesting whoever meets me will kill me for an unspecified reason God agrees to this request in the Samaria Gael which is a biblical tra tradition calls the mark of Cain was an emblem designed as the cup of the waters or the rose cross the dew cup and it was identified in all records including those of the Egyptians the Palestinians and the Hebrews and else as being the upright center red cross, which is a circle throughout the gates and which is developed and embellished, but it was all, always remain essentially the same as recognized as being original symbol of the Holy Grail. Ooh, that is so interesting. Think about that. Cain walked around with the mark of the Holy Grail on his forehead. Or was it? Another anomaly is presented some soon afterwards in genesis when we are told that cain found himself a wife on earth where her parents if adam were her parents of adam and eve were the only couple alive then without confronting this anomaly in genesis proceeds to list the names of cain's descendants it becomes clear from all that they some very important information has been edited from out the old testament Plainly, there were plenty of other people before at that time, and it is not difficult to find these stories outside the Bible, quite apart the Sumerian records. Even old Hebrew and earlier Christian texts give far more information in this regard. In order to further enhance the historical succession from Cain, 
He was married to his half-sister, a purebred Enoki, princesses called Lua. Her father was Enoki, and her mother was Lilith, a granddaughter of Enlil. Although not giving the name of Cain's wife, the Bible does not name their younger son Enoch. I'm sorry, the Bible does name their younger son Enoch. While the Sumerian records cite his elder son and kindly successor of Anton, who is perhaps better known as the king of Kish. As we can see here, Anton was to have walked with gods, okay, and he was fed with the planet of birth or the tree of life as it is called in Genesis, hence for the king of the line of where designated as being the twig of the tree and the ancient word of the twigs as clone. In later times, this plant or tree was a redefined as a vine or so the growl, the vine of the messianic bloodline became the interwine in the holy grail literature of the substantial ages. In the Old Testament book of the Genesis and the lines of descendant are given from Cain and from his half-brother Seth, but of interest is to note that the name is detailed and the earlier generations are, pertain, are pretty much the same in each list. Although given the different order, Enoch, Jarad, Mahal, Methusel, and Lamach are pretty much the same. In Genesis 4.17 states that after he killed Abel, Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore him Enoch. In an effort to explain where Cain and Abel acquired wives, some tradition sources stated that each son, child of Adam and Eve was born with a twin. So this is where we get the twin theory. When Cain was born, Alon was born. When Abel was born, Azura was born. So it was, they were born two at a time. Okay. Some religious sources describe Eklund's name as Lula. She is described as the most beautiful, as we see here. She is written in the Book of Eden, which itself is extended earlier Apocrypha text. In the second book of Adam and Eve, chapter 1, as we see right here, when Lulav heard Cain's words, she wept and went to the, her father and mother and told them how that Cain had killed his brother, Abel. Then they all cried aloud and lifted up their voices and slapped their faces and threw dust upon their heads and rent asunder their garments and went out and came to the place where Abel was killed. And they found him lying on the earth, killed in the beast around him, while they wept and cried because of his of this, just one from his body, by reason of its purity, went forth a smell of sweet spices. And Adam carried him, his tears streaming down his face, and went to the cave of treasures, where he laid him and found him up with the sweet spices of myrrh. And Adam and Eve continued but the burial of him in great grief a hundred and forty days. Abel was fifteen and a half years old, and Cain seven, seventeen years old, seventeen years and a half. As for Cain, when the mourning for his brother was ended, he took his sister Luloth and married her without the leave from his father and mother, for they they could not keep him from her, but reason for the heavenly heart. See, wait a second. So it says that Adam and Eve couldn't keep Cain from his sister. He was lusting after his sister. So he ended up taking her. Okay. In a place where many, okay, so it says, and then he went down to the bottom of the mountain away from the garden near the place where he had killed his brother. And at that place were many fruit trees and forest trees his sister bare him a child who in their turn began to multiply by degrees until they filled the place. But as for Adam and Eve, they came not together after Adam's for, or Abel's funeral for seven years. After this, however, Eve conceived and while she was with child, Adam said to her, come, let us take up an offering and offer it to God and ask him to give us a fair child in whom we may find comfort in whom we may join marriage and to Abel's sister. Then they have prepared an offering and brought it up to the altar and offering it before the Lord. 
and began to retreat to accept the offering to give them as a good offspring. And God heard Adam accepted his offering. Then he, they worshiped Adam and Eve and their daughter and came down to the cave of treasure and placed a lamp in it to burn them by night and by day before the body of Abel. Then Adam and Eve continued fasting and praying until Eve's time came that she should be delivered when she said to Adam, I wish to go to the cave in the rock to bring forth it. And he said, Go and take with thee thy daughter to await unto thee. But when I remain in this cave a treasure before the body of the son of Abel, then the Eve hearkened to Adam and went she and her daughter, but Adam remained by himself in the cave of treasures. In chapter two, it says the third son, the third son is born to Adam and Eve. So if we look here, it says Adam brought forth for her son perfectly beautiful in figure and continency, is beautiful as like that of his father, Adam, yet forth beautiful. Then Eve was con confronted when she saw him and remained eight days in the cave. And then she hurt her daughter unto Adam to tell him to come and see the child. So we see now the child is being born. Adam came and saw the child. Goods look, his beauty and his perfect figure. And he rejoiced for over him and he was confronted for Abel. Then he's named this child Seth. So as we see here, this is when Seth was actually born. That God heard from them and they, and they bore Seth. Okay. Now... If we skip down here to uh, six, and they came to a river of the water, Adam and his daughter washed themselves because of their sorrow for Abel. But Eve and the, and the babe, baby, was washed for purification. Then they returned to the, to, took an offering and went to the mountain, offered it up for the babe, and God accepted it for their offering and sent his blessing and upon their son Seth. And they became back to the cave of treasure. As for Adam, he knew not again his wife Eve all the days of his life. Neither was any more off or offspring born. So we already see, it says right here, that they only had these children here. They didn't have any more. But when we read it earlier, it says that they had more children. So somebody's lying or somebody's changed the truth. Now we see here, Seth marries Aklia. Adam lives to see grandchildren and great-grandchildren. When our father Adam saw the Seth was a perfect car, he finished, he wished him to marry lest the enemy should appear to him so that he would overcome him. So Adam said to his son, I wish on my son thou we'd wed thy sister Aklia, Abel's sister. So now here we see that Seth married Abel's sister. Okay, but wait a second. Ava was married to her before. That's really strange. I'm telling you, Jerry Springer's going on right here, guys. Now that she was not afraid, oh my son, there is no disgrace in it. I wish thee to marry from fear, lest the enemy overcome thee. So Adam's already telling her, you can marry her, don't worry, you'll be fine, it's okay, there's no disgrace in marrying your own sister or marrying your brother's wife. Seth overwhelmed did not wish to marry but in obedience to his father and mother he said not a word so Adam married him to Achille and he was 15 years old wow but when he was 20 years of age he begot a son who he called Enosh and they begot another child from them and Enosh grew and married and begot Canaan and Canaan also grew and married Methel so as we see here this is the line on how and who married who was you know did Seth marry Cain the same Abel's son or I mean Abel's daughter or wife or was his sister as you can see this is another another book that tells us that Seth also married you know Abel's uh, wife or his sister Eve gives here we have Eve Eve gives birth to Cain and Abel Eve dreams that Cain drinks the blood of Abel but that then came out of his mouth. Cain kills Abel. Michael promises Adam to, to a new son and Seth to born in the place of Abel. Abel is born. Eve dreams that Cain drinks the blood. So what does she do? 
she talks to uh, Adam and they go and they talk. Seth is born in a place of Abel along with 30 other sons and $32. So wait a second. We never just told it. They only had like five or six children. Now we were told that Seth is born in a place as of Abel along with 30 other sons and 30 or 32 daughters. That is weird. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say that. Okay, the Forgotten Books of Eden, the first book of Adam and Eve, chapter, page, Cain and his tw twin sister Lilith is born. Oh, see, Cain and his twin sister Lilith is born in this chapter on page 59. Abel and his twin sister Achlelia is born. The Forgotten Books of Eden, the second book, for as for Adam, he knew not again his wife all the days of his life, neither was any more offspring born, but only those five, Cain, Lula, Abel, Eclia, and Seth, alone. And, jo and Joseph, he, in his end notes, the number of Adam's children also says the old translation was 33 sons and 23 daughters. Wait a second, we just said 30, daughter, 30 sons and maybe 32 or 30 daughters. Somebody is transcribing that or really misquoting that. In the book of Jasher 1, 1 12, Yahweh Elohim drove them in that day from the garden of Eden till the end of earth, which they were taken, and they went and dwelt east in the garden of Eden. And Adam knew Havan, his wife, and she bore him two sons and three daughters. Wait a second, now we know he bore daughters, see? And she called the name of the first born Canaan, saying, I have obtained a man from Yah. And the name of the second she called Havel, for she said, In vanity he came to the, into earth, and vanity he shall be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and father gave them possession of the land. And Cain was a tiller of the earth, and Cain, Havel was a keeper of sheep. In the Pakar Suda of the Old Testament, and we read here, it says, And behold, there came twelve angels, two virtues, standing on the right and on the left of Eve. And Mark, uh, Michael was standing on the right, and he stroked her on the face as far as to the breast, and said to Eve, Blessed art thou, Eve, for Adam's sake, since his prayers and intercession are great. I have been sent, thou have mayest receive, or help rise up now, and prepare to bear thee. She bore a son, and he was he was shining at once, and it and once the babe rose up and ran. Wait a second, this baby just came out of that womb, got up, and just took off running. <laughs> I'm telling you, something's weird. He ran and bore and bore a blade of grass in his hands and gave it to his mother. So he ran outside, picked up some grass, and came back inside. Here you go, mom. <laughs> Then thou the east, and the Lord gave God sent divers seeds by Michael and the an archangel, and gave to Adam, and showed him how to work and till the ground. That that may my fruit have fruit which they have all their generations might live. For there if Eve conceived and bare a son, which is his name Abel, and Cain and Abel used to stay together. And Eve said to Adam, My Lord, why I slept, I saw a vision. As it were the blood of our son, Abel, in the hand of Cain, was gulping it down in his mouth. Therefore I sorrow. In the book of Jasher, the human developed an Eve span, and they followed the river of the sea, and gave birth to Cain. Look, she said, I have made another human. See? And Eve gave birth to Abel, and later to Seth. Cain gathered the fruits of all the seeds bearing plants, but Abel made spears hunting and brought forth meat. And Seth, the sons of Quarrel, over the leather, the leadership of the clan. So we have, they, here they were quarreling over the leadership of the tribe or their, their clan that they had. After human lost the use of one arm. Wait a second. When did he lose one arm? <laughs> then Cain lived in a great fear for Abel, who was slain a hunter who killed him, who could kill without warning. And they went and so Cain killed Abel with his own spear as he rested in the camp. They buried Abel and the human found support from Eve beside him. So Eve brought human a flaming branch to wield in his good hand and they approached Cain 
together. Now Cain started away towards the wilderness, but human commanded him to return after 20 years so that they should not lose another son forever. Cain cried that they would not remember him. But Eve says, we will remember our son, for we are not animals. And Cain touched the burning stick to his forehead. Wait a second, there's the mark, the mark of Cain. So that they would know him by his mark. Cain was strong and swift, and he fled from the river for the, for it, to the east, and he ran six days, pausing only to eat in the rest. On the seventh day, he ascended to the top of the mountains. There God showed him a vision, a great city, a place by the fields, orchards and children, which children of Abel would have made. Cain looked in the wander in his vision until it faded and setting sun, for there were no other people outside of Africa. Look at that, they came from Africa. And Cain continued thus into this exile. Six days he walked and gathered food, but every seventh day he had visions of the city which God had planned for the children of Abel. Cain wandered for 20 years, and then he knew the whole vastness of the world. Seth from Ramah, Thal's daughters, alone along the river, and together they had a daughter named Joshua. When Joshua had grown into womanhood, she met Cain returning home. On that day, Seth had killed a great beast, so they celebrated on the return of Cain. Eve made a fire, and humans sang, Ramah Jasher danced. So as we see here, okay, God made God married Cain and Jasher that night under the stars. In that way, humans said, we shall always rejoice with two branches of my family and rejoice. Then they feasted and late on the night, while human foretold joys and sorrows, Cain described his visions. Everything that human said was true, but Cain spoke on the word of the children evil. So human was the first true prophet and came the first false prophet by they by they dwelt together in his kingship for all the rest of their days and on that day the giant beast lived in their part of the world and consumed trees and made divesting throughout the wilderness but Seth taught his sons to, to hunt as he heard her from Abel because God told them that the children must learn from their elders wisdom then the daughter of Cain married the sons of Seth and after the death of Eve, they scattered to the find the lands that Cain had seen. So the human children, the giant beasts, and the trees spread over all the lands until the squirrels could run from the sea to sea without touching the ground. Then the whole world was like a garden in the sight of God. Now, from all this, from what you've read and seen, what do you think? Do you really think, you know, that Cain actually gave up his offering to God and God said, I don't like your offering, but okay, but I like your offering? Or was this because Cain saw his sister that was supposed to be married to Abel and said, I like her because she's beautiful? Was it a an actual sibling? That was rivalry that was going on and he decided to kill his brother over that or was it because of an actual sacrifice think about that ponder on that as you go this night to the rest of this shabbat may you be blessed with this word i pray this over you everyone who's listening to this word tonight may you be blessed and have peace in his name in yeshua's name i pray amen shabbat shalom everybody See you again next week. May you be blessed. Peace be with you. And always peace be with you. As I give you peace in Yeshua's name. Shalom.